Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Guppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is Description and Solubility Tests as per Section 5.30 of USP and EP General Notices. Let us see the intent of section 5.30 of USP. It says the reference table merely denotes properties of articles that comply with monograph requirements. The reference table, which we can see in the next slide, denotes the general solubility properties of the compendial articles. The reference table is intended primarily for those who use, prepare and dispense the drugs and or related articles. So the information of the solubilities is provided primarily to the formulator that is the user for converting the articles into dosage forms. Then why is this important for evaluation of the compendial articles? The guideline says Although the information provided in the monographs and the information in the reference table may indirectly assist in the preliminary evaluation of an article, it is not intended to serve as a standard or test for purity. So the information indirectly assists in the basic evaluation of the article. It is not intended to be the proof for purity of the article. Let us see how the solubility matrix is defined in descriptive term. See the table below for various classifications of solubilities. See this chart. There is a descriptive term for various classifications of solubility and parts of solvent required for one part of solute. Here solute means it is a compendial article and part means either you can take weight or volume. So let us see the very soluble category. In that category when you take one part of solute when brought into solution in less than one part of solvent in which it is supposed to dissolve, it should be clear. This category is considered as very soluble. Let us see the freely soluble category. For this freely soluble category, it is between one part of solvent to ten parts of solvent. That means if you take one part of solute and put it in one part of solvent it is about 50 percent and one part of solute in 10 parts of solvent it's around 10 percent so if you calculate the percentage of the solubility it is easier to remember so for freely soluble you have to remember that it is between 50 percent on the upper side and 10 percent on the lower side let us see for soluble it is between 10% and 3.33% on the lower side. Let us see sparingly soluble. It is 3.33% on the upper side and 1% on the lower side. The slightly soluble character is between 1% and 0.1%. Very slightly soluble is between 0.1% and 0.01% and anything less than 0.01% is considered as practically insoluble or insoluble. So this is how it is easier to remember the solubility characteristics by calculating the percentages. But here there is one point, one important point to note is that when the solubility of the article is on the, on the lower side it is recommended to classify as next descriptive term. That means if the article is soluble at around 
30 parts it is better if you classify as sparingly soluble category instead of the soluble category let us see what more the section prescribes soluble articles when brought into solutions may show traces of physical impurities such as minute fragments of filter paper fibers and other particulate matter unless limited are excluded by definite tests or other individual monograph the point here is the article should be soluble as per the descriptive term given in the previous slide but it may show some traces of physical impurities such as minute fragments of filter paper or fibers because the intent of this test is only to confirm that the article goes into solution in the category described but there is an exclusion if the test says the solution should be clear and no external or extraneous particles are allowed in that case the traces of filter papers or fibers are not allowed also when there is a special quantitative solubility test is given in the individual monograph and is designated by a test heading it is test for purity this is a very important point to note the solubility characteristics are different from a special quantitative solubility test that means there is a specific requirement for certain articles that some amount of material or some specific amount of material has to be dissolved in specific amount of solution and it should be clear uh, and it should not be intense than you know it, it gives some standards you have to be very careful to differentiate between these two let us see some typical examples where a specific solubility test is given take for example there is a api called ethanolol see this solubility test sparingly soluble in water soluble in ethanol slightly soluble in dichloromethane this is a generic test and it should be within the ambit of the previous uh, table that was given in the reference table let us see a specific uh, solubility test here see there is a requirement you have to prepare a solution s in which it says dissolve 0.1 gram of the test substance in carbon free water and dilute to 10 ml with the same solvent and it says clarity and color of solution solution s is clear and not more intensely colored than the degree 6 of the reference solution 1.11.2 method 2 this is a test for quality see there is a specific requirement that you have to take 0.1 gram of the test substance and you have to dissolve in carbon free water and dilute to 10 ml with the same solvent you have to do exactly same way you can't do in any different way clarity and color of solution this solution s which is prepared as above is clear and not more intensely colored than degree 6 of reference solution means you have to refer that section 1.11.2 method to for for uh, how dark it is what is that degree 6 reference solution you will be able to get only in that particular uh, test so this test is a very very speci specific uh, 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 test and this is a quality test you have to note this particular point let us see another example omeprazole it says solubility is very slightly soluble in water soluble in methylene chloride sparingly soluble in ethanol 96% and in methanol it dissolves in dilute solutions of alkali hydroxides this is a generic test and it should be exactly as per the descriptive terms given in the uh, in the reference table see this is a specific test it says dissolve 0.5 grams in methylene chloride and dilute to 25 ml with the same solvent 
again it says the appearance of solution should be clear as per 2.2.1 section this is a test for quality this also you have to remember and you have to do exactly the same way as prescribed this, this doesn't come under the solubility test let us see what ep general notices prescribe under characters ep says statements under heading characters are not to be interpreted in a strict sense and are not requirements just as in usp this is also a generic test and it is not a test for purity this may help this may assist in evaluating the uh, the articles preliminarily but it is not for test for purity it also says in statements of solubility character section the terms used to have the following significance referred to a room temperature between 15 and 25 so the solubility is you have to do between these two temperatures and the table is exactly same as in usp section 5.30 there is additional uh, reference in this the term partially soluble is used to describe a mixture where only some of the components dissolve there is no clarity on some so we can interpret the way you like the term miscible is used to describe a liquid that is miscible in all portions with the stated solvent that means you can take any ratio and it should be miscible then that is considered as miscible let us see the significance of this the general solubility tests are for information only it is a character of that particular article and not directly the test for purity but if the solubility test does not pass then the article may be suspicious to be spurious which has to be established by some other test so preliminarily if the article does not pass in any of these categories prescribed then you may have to doubt that and see whether there is any other problem with this i hope you understand the requirements of description and solubility tests clearly and try to understand the requirements of ep and usp try to incorporate in your procedures thanks for watching for more videos please do subscribe like and share thank you